Good evening, and welcome to the 2015 Dick Corbin Senior Sports Award Night. In a moment, our student athletes are gonna enter the auditorium. I'm gonna ask that you all remain seated. There will be a slideshow playing at the same time, so we want to make sure everybody can have full view. So, with that, Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite Taylor Gillian up to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please? Please rise and remain standing for our national anthem to follow.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as Sebastian Moranto sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars throw the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the At this time, I'm going to ask Sebastian and Taylor to present these small tokens of our appreciation to the Corbin family for sh letting us share Dick with you on this evening. Thank you. Members of the Corbin family, Superintendent Tremblay, Principal Banach, honored guests, and of course our student athletes of the Milford High School class of 2015. Good evening and welcome to the fifth annual Dick Corbin Senior Athletic Awards Ceremony, sponsored by the Milford High School Boosters Club. We gather here tonight at an event fittingly named in honor of Coach Dick Corbin to celebrate the team and individual achievements of our senior athletes as a cap off their Milford High School athletic careers. I thank the Corbin family for their continued support of our student athletes, the Boosters Club, and this event. I'd like to take just a minute to introduce a few of my good friends and fellow board members and helpers up here tonight. I have Chris Lynch, who is vice president of our Boosters Club. Unfortunately, Joe Arcudi, our treasurer, and Colleen Ferreira, our secretary, couldn't join us this evening. And we have our athletic director, Peter Boucher, for his first event. Five years ago, I sat up the back of the auditorium, way up in the back corner where I think my family is sitting right now, in our usual seats for the first Dick Corbin Senior Athletic Awards Ceremony back in 2011. Not ever having the honor to meet Coach, Coach Corbin, 
I've listened intently to our guest speakers over the past four years as they have described their own experience with Coach Corbin and his impact on Milford High School athletics. There's no way that I can summarize all that Coach Corbin has accomplished into a brief opening introduction. What I can tell you is that Coach Corbin came to Milford in 1968 as the Director of Physical Education and Head Football Coach, a position which he held until 1979. During his time here, he laid the foundation of the Milford High School Athletic Program and many of the traditions that carry on today. In simple terms, Coach Corbin is the father of Milford High School Athletics. Now as I look at you, our senior athletes, it seems like just yesterday I was coaching some of you at t-ball, youth football, or youth soccer. And I can still hear some of your voices. Coach Tom, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Coach Tom, can you tie my shoe? Coach Tom, it's cold. Is it almost over? And I questioned what the heck I was doing out there at 7.30 on a rainy Saturday morning on a soaking wet field. It took many years and many coaches and many games after me to get my answer. You all amaze me. You've grown from those baseball and softball players that couldn't hit the, tee, the ball off the t-ball stand, or the football players that couldn't quite get all the equipment to fit right, or the soccer players who couldn't keep your cleats tied into incredible athletes. 20 league titles, eight district titles, eight state finalists, and six state championships over the past four years. Impressive. Many Many of you have been honored for your hard work by being recognized with MIAA awards, named to the newspaper's select teams, competing in national championships, setting school records, and induction into the National Honor Society. Again, impressive. When you've been an athlete your entire life, from grade school to high school, rotating between multiple sports or focusing, <clears throat> or focusing much of your time on the one sport you really love, athletics becomes second nature. And by the time you reach your senior year, sports are a part of your everyday life. You train, lift, run, work on your skills, and practice all for your season. Because it becomes part of your daily activities, you take for granted the amount of time and effort you actually put into it. For example, on any given night, some of your classmates are cramming for an exam you'll have the next day. Not you. You instead suit up, grab the water cooler and the equipment, and head to the bus that'll carry you to your game. You try to study your class notes and handouts between potholes underneath the, the dimming lights of the bus. You compete for two or three hours and get back on the bus for the return ride home. Other than the limiting studying time on the bus, you've just spent six hours competing rather than studying. Will you stay up late and continue to study and maybe pull off an A on that exam? Yes, you will, because that's the type of student athletes you are. The cycle, school, sports, study, sleep, doesn't phase you at all. You wake up the next morning, take the test, go to other classes, go to practice, then read, do homework, study for another test. The athletic academic cycle is a continuous stream of events that consumes much of your time. Compared to the other students who don't participate in an athletic team, you sleep less, you develop many hours to practice, and your body aches from continuous competition. But still, the love for your sport drives you on. Athletics at Milford High School has hopefully taught you many valuable lessons, but three things in particular. First, time management. Always manage your time, and more importantly, manage it well. Second, determination. You put your minds and bodies to the test every day as athletes. You train, practice, and compete. Whether it's during the last 100-yard sprint, that final two minutes in the second half of the game, or game point, you never give up. And finally, sportsmanship. Winning is obviously the goal, and much more fun than losing. 
But losing gracefully is just as important, not only on the courts and fields of play, but also in life. So with that being said, realize that you can't win everything, whether it's the perfect score on an exam, that athletic competition against the rival team, or that girl or boy you so desperately want to date. You have already won so much as student athlete. You are a team member, you are a leader, you are confident and you are proud. You are always, you are, and you always will be Milford High School Scarlet Hawk student athletes. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Peter Boucher, Milford High School Athletic Director, for his welcoming remarks. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the fifth annual Dick Corbin Senior Awards Night, where we are striving to honor the foundational characteristics that Coach Corbin helped instill, Corbin instilled in Scarlet Hawk Nation many years ago as a legendary coach and athletic director. I am proud to have been invited to join the Scarlet Hawk team, and I consider it a distinct privilege to welcome you this evening. I love the manner in which this community supports and expects excellence. This expectation for success and the de dedication to excellence that is required to live up to those high expectations is a driving force for the life lessons that are learned in the trenches of our practices and games held on our courts, fields, mats, track, pits, ice, pools, turf, and gymnasiums. I think I covered everything. In my short but growing time here as your athletic director, I've had the pleasure of witnessing our teams and student athletes both struggle and succeed in the athletic arena. Very similar to the way we all struggle and succeed in our everyday lives. I have observed the day-to-day -day successes and challenges of our young adults trying to balance academic, academics, athletics, and real life. I've witnessed some tough defeats, and I've also been a ferocious spectator at some of the most thrilling W's, also known as wins or victories, depending on who you're talking to, of my 35 plus year athletic career. And what I've noticed is that these student athletes do possess the characteristics that we hope they would have learned from participating in athletics. They can and do learn from their mistakes. They have improved their mental and physical skill sets with repetition, dedication, and practice and they have increased their chances to triumph as they have pursued goals with passion, commitment, and focus. The key component for all of those triumphs is the relentless and unwavering pursuit of excellence, which they have displayed so well over the past four years. Most recently, I have seen it over the past six months, and it's done nothing short of impress me. Specifically, we're here tonight to give thanks and honor the efforts and accomplishments of our senior student athletes. It's important that we recognize them and also acknowledge their support networks consisting of parents, families, teachers, coaches, friends, administration, school committee, boosters, community members. The list of supporters can and should go on. These student athletes, supported by their school and home teams, have relentlessly pursued excellence in the community, the academic realm, and certainly in the athletic arenas. I'm excited to spend the evening with these young men and women and their comprehensive community of supporters as we collectively celebrate the dedication, hard work, and overall accomplishments of our soon-to-be graduates. I knew Coach Corbin, and I think he would be proud of your athletic and academic accomplishments throughout the last four years. I think he would want you to continue to grow as students of academia, athletics, and life in general. I believe he would want you to always be proud and contributing members of Scarlet Hawk Nation and our general community. And I am certain he would want you to continue to strive for excellence each and every season as you move on to the next phase of your lives. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Let's rock on with the evening and honor our dedicated student athletes and their support teams with some well-deserved recognition, awards, and scholarships. Thank you, I will now turn it over to another Scarlet Hawk legend, Mr. Nick Sakili. Please enjoy the evening. Thank you. Um, very honored to be here tonight. Um, 
To give you a little bit of personal history about Dick Corbin, you can read about his accomplishments in the program tonight. You can see his Hall of Fame plaque down on the wall. Um, you know, the question, who was Dick Corbin? It's all there for you. But personally, he meant a lot to me. I was one of his first student athletes. Um, first of all, he was a devoted husband to his wife, Ruth Ann, a uh, devoted father to Debbie, Chrissy, and Melinda, and a doting grandfather, and the biggest fan of seven granddaughters and one grandson. And believe me, he cherished them all. Dick was a native of Natick, but he made Milford his hometown when he came here in 1968, and he never left. And Milford High School athletics meant a ton to him. As I said, I was on his, he came here uh, my junior year, spring of my junior year. And believe it or not, we had football practice in the gym in early spring back then, so he could get his team ready. So uh, my senior year, he coached me in football, and he introduced me to the sport of wrestling, a sport which obviously I came to love, and, and I uh, made my own here at Milford High School. Uh, he was an outstanding coach in his own right, in every way, and it meant this to so many successful MHS coaches. Names that you hear, names that you see on the Hall of Fame wall, Coach Stan Breen, Coach Manguso, Dagnes, Coach Slack, Coach Chaplin, Coach Waxy Cullen, Mrs. Achille and myself among them. He brought us all here in the early 70s when he came to Milford. And uh, as you know, most of us spent 30 to 35 years here coaching. So that in itself is a legacy. I know I wouldn't have chosen my career path without his influence. Not only was he a coach and a mentor, but he was also a dear friend who I still think of often. As I said, um, what did he do for Milford Athletics? Read it in your program. And why do we honor him for those things? Simply put, he built both the phys ed program and the athletic program. Again, when I was a junior in high school, there was no phys ed in Milford, none whatsoever. So senior year was the first time we saw a physical education teacher. We had three or four sports. We had, for boys, we had cross country, football, basketball, and baseball. For girls, we had basketball, period. Um, you know, there were, there were club teams you could put, participate on, tennis or softball, but they weren't organized sports. He put the Scarlet and Scarlet, the, the Hawks and Scarlet Hawks. We were the Scarlets back in 1968, simply the Scarlets. And, you know, it was, when I was back here in the fall, temporarily, I talked to some of your parents, and even they didn't know that. Um, that's how long ago it was. Uh, he had a contest, you know, naming contest when he got here, and the Hawks won out. So the school committee wouldn't let him get rid of the Scarlets, though, so we became the Scarlet Hawks. If you've ever seen one, I haven't. <laughs> Our facilities, we had two facilities. We had Town Park, we had Fino Field for baseball. We used the old middle school East, which at the time was St. Mary's High School, for our gymnasium, for basketball games. Uh, that was it. And we had an eighth of a mile track, down, cinder track down at Fino Field in the annex. And uh, he forced me to be a two mile of my senior year. I never ran track before. Running 16 laps around an eighth of a mile track was no fun. You're always on a turn. He was a champion of women's athletics having three daughters and seven granddaughters, there couldn't be any other thing for him. And he really uh, developed the, uh, the women's athletic programs here at Milford. Finally, uh, he left a legacy of commitment and success, and again, exhibited by the coaches he hired um, and left behind, and uh, the pride that he took in being the number one Scarlet Hawk. So, Again, I'm honored to be here. I'm proud to be here. Congratulations and good luck in your future endeavors. Uh, next, I'd like to welcome our swimming coach, Dave Chaplin, who will introduce tonight's guest speaker.
Ruth Ann, members of the Corbin family, boosters, school administrators, and most of all, the student athletes of the class of 2015. Tonight, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the student athletes of 2015 to my brother, Ernie Chaplin, class of 79. Ernie, too, was a student playing soccer and baseball. As a starting goalkeeper his sophomore year, he began a three-year string of selection to both the Midland League and Central Massachusetts all-select all -select soccer teams. Each season, the team advanced into the Division I district tournament, led by coach Charlie Stan. On the baseball field, he cites the great fortune of having to play for Charlie again for four more, year, more seasons as a catcher on both the JV and varsity teams. In his senior year, the team qualified for the Central Massachusetts District Division I baseball tournament, starting the first year of the existing 36-year streak of district qualifiers. Following their elimination from the district soccer tournament in the fall of 78, he played for the varsity football team as a place kicker for one very memorable game. He was MVP and captain of both sports, as well as a three-time Worcester Telegram and Milford Daily News All-Star. Following graduation, Ernie entered Fitchburg State College and became the starting goalkeeper as a freshman. He held that position for four seasons. His sophomore year, Fitchburg posted a long-standing collegiate record of nine wins, nine, zero losses, and nine ties, five of which were of the zero-zero variety and advanced to the ECAC Division III playoffs, marking Fitchburg's first postseason tournament appearance in 25 years. He was named to the All-New England soccer team, was a Division III All-American, played five seasons as goalkeeper for the Milford Portuguese Club, Lazar League, the region's toughest, most competitive semi-professional soccer league in which the Milford Club won several championships. In his final two years at Fitchburg, captaining the soccer team, he was active in the Catholic-sponsored Newman Center on campus and was selected to the National Industrial Arts Academic and Educational Society. During that period, he expected, it, accepted an offer from the United States soccer to represent the nation at an international tournament held in San Juan, Puerto Rico where several of the world's richest professional soccer organizations fielded their national junior teams, including Real Madrid and Manchester United. Ernie married Pam Colliandro, class of 77. They have been married 29 years. They have three grown children, Carolyn Gregory and attorney Stephen Chaplin, all graduates of Milford High School. As a civic and community steward, Ernie commits in volunteering over 100 hours each year to the educational and spiritual development of the youth of Greater Hopedale. He is presently co-chairman of the mission outreach team at the Sacred Heart Church in Hopedale, where his goal is to make a difference in everyday lives of those in the region and to motivate individuals to be active in their community. Professionally, Ernie has worked for 30 years in the printing and packaging industry serving pharmaceutical and medical industries. He has worked exclusively in sales and marketing, holding various positions, sales executive, vice president of sales, vice president of marketing, product development, as well as acquisition and strategic planning, all while serving on the executive management team. As part of his work, Ernie has traveled internationally in Poland, Germany, Ireland, Canada, and extensively throughout the United States. Through all his travels, he says, and I quote, it's all about the people I have met along the way. And you'd be surprised how many people know about Milford. I am honored, student athletes, to present to you a proud alumnus and member of the class of 1979, my brother, Ernie Chaplin. He's my brother and I love him. <laughs> Don't you just want to hug him? I've spoken a lot in a lot of places over the years, but tonight I'm extraordinarily nervous because my 86-year-old mom is in the house. I love you, Mom. Aww. 
I am so grateful to be here. Grateful. Ruth Ann, Chrissy, Debbie, Melinda, ladies. My in-laws spoke often of Ruth Ann and Dick Corbin. All of the things that they did for individuals that a lot of people never knew about. With reverence, they spoke about Dick and Ruth Ann. And as my brother said, it's all about the people you meet along the way. And I'm convinced of that. When I got to Milford High School, I had the opportunity to meet Charlie Stand. What a great man. And I had the opportunity for seven years, seven seasons, to play for Charlie Stand. I think I played about seven days for Dick Corbin. But that's another story. And Charlie said to me one time in my senior year, I went to him, I said, Coach, I'm going to go out for the musical. He said, you should do it. When are you going to have that opportunity again? And as I took this stage tonight, I, I look, it's right about here where I sang my solo in Oklahoma as a senior in high school at Milford High. One of the student athletes that dare bridge the gap between the, that end of the building and this end of the building. But I did it. And I did it on the encouragement of my coach. But it's the people you meet along the way, in business and in life and in all the things that you endeavor to do here today, tomorrow, and as you proceed into college and beyond. I often wonder, when I was asked to do this, what was my link to Dick Corbin? What was my link to Dick Corbett? And you know, it, it really wasn't sports. It was conversation. It was conversations. Because I had a lot of conversations with Dick Corbin. Conversations that I believe he probably doesn't even realize had an impact on me as an adult, not as a student. Because what I remember and what I recall when I was 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, a newspaper boy here in Milford, down at the old Milford High School, bonfires on Friday night before we'd go down and take on St. Mary's, down in front of the old middle school. Powerful stuff where he would bring community together for a common purpose and a common good. And you know, when I was 10 or 11 or 12 years old, my good friend and I, Charlie Compagnoni, we'd go to his house and we'd get out the can of spray starch and the football. And you know what we would do? Well, we couldn't afford teas. Maybe Charlie could. But we'd sit in that backyard and we'd tee up that football and we'd kick field goals over that, over that uh, clothesline all the time. This was our little makeshift shift game, Charlie and I. And we did it because we'd go to those Milford football games. We were always inspired. Always inspired. But I believe what I've learned in the business world is simply this. The relationship is the conversation. No conversation, no relationship. And in this day and age, trust me, I know how difficult it seems to have conversations. And it's a shame. But everyone in this audience can do something about that, and we know we can. I used to be asked four questions every month for 10 years by my CEO. What's changed since we talked last month? 
what topic are you hoping I don't bring up today? What conversation are you avoiding with me right now? And finally, what is the most important thing that we need to talk about today? Every month for 10 years. When you're in management, these are the kind of questions you have to answer. So, Dick Corbin, Milford High School, down in the long hallway, here's what I remember. There he is, on the corner, all Midland League, all Central Mass. What's that all about? I think Dick wanted me to be like my brother and play cornerback for the Milford High School football team, but I had no part of that. I didn't like to get hit, so leave that up to my brother. But one day in my senior year, when soccer season was over, when we got beat by a hat trick up by Worcester North, Dick Corbin said to me, a what question? What would you think? What would you think about playing football? Soccer season's over. You can kick a soccer ball 65, 70 yards. You've got to be able to do something with a football. I said, sure, I'd love it. So there I was, out on the football field, trying to learn how to punt. Couldn't do it. You see, I drop kicked the soccer ball. I didn't punt it out of my hand. So I could not punt a football. But I could kick a field goal, and it was Thanksgiving Day, and all my buddies played football, every one of them. So the first touchdown is scored, and what happens? Send out the point after team, right? Out we went. It's Chappie's first time kicking a point after. It's up, it's good. Flag on the play, back it up five yards. Kick it again. Flag on the play, kick it again five yards. Third time, snap, kick it, it's up, it's good. All my friends on the football team set me up and they set me up good. Of course, I never figured that out because I didn't know what I was really doing. My conversations with Dick Corbin were here. Most of my conversations were at the softball fields where Dick enjoyed with Ruth Ann watching their grandchildren play softball. And we'd reminisce about Milford sports and boy it was great. Boy, it was great. And I realized that the, that the silence in our conversation can do the heavy lifting. And I learned that from my CEO when he'd ask me a question and he would just wait for my response. As he would say, Ernie, we'll let the silence do the heavy lifting. We all fear silence sometime. But my passion for conversation over the last few years, in light of the ability of technology to do all of the wonderful things for us, led me to spend some of my own money and create a passion. And I began with an idea to help people all recognize that there's an opportunity for us each and every day to step back and put our technology aside. And it is very difficult. And it is not just a high school student, it's in business. Heck, probably your grandmother or your grandfather can be preoccupied with their technology. And I started something called All Phones Down. And I started it because someone in my family was cyberbullied. We got through it. But that episode led me to believe that conversation, being eye to eye with someone, is so vitally important in our business, in our community, 
in our relationships with one another. And I think Dick Corbin would want each and every one of us to have a relationship with each other where we know what we're communi communicating to each other. The value that we put in each other. You know, they say that um, people will uh, forget what you, uh, what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And Dick Corbin made me feel very valued in our conversations. Finally, tonight, there are 520 opportunities here for each and every one of you to have a conversation. Inside these envelopes is something that you're probably going to throw away. That's okay. I hope you hold on to it. I hope that you give it to someone that you love. See, on the back of my phone, if I can get it out, they call it a, they call it a, uh, I have a little sticker on the back of my phone. And when I get in my car, I put this phone down and I put these stickers face up. And all it says is all phones down. Why? Because I want to be safe and I want to be with the people I love at the end of the day. So, where are my ushers? Pass those out. Don't open them up, take them home. Throw them away if you want. I hope you keep them. Have a conversation at home. Have a conversation with someone you love. Think about what you do at your technology. Don't put it between you and others in your conversations because the conversation is the relationship. I had a conversation one day <clears throat> with Dick Corbin. It was an August afternoon. It was hot. It was steamy. And the, and the rain clouds were coming in. And I was wearing this hat. And Coach Manguso gave me this hat on the anniversary, the year after Charlie Stan passed away. Coach Manguso thought enough of me to call me up and say, I got one more. Do you want it? I said, absolutely. I had that hat on that particular day in August watching the softball game. I think Sarah was, Sarah was probably playing second base. Emily was where? Center field, yeah. Are you, are you Emily? Oh my goodness gracious. Whew. How people grow up. And Lauren, and, and, well Dick always said Lauren was pitching. He always did. But I've got this hat on and, and uh, here's Dick sitting in a car. Storm clouds are coming in. Game's going to get called. I got this hat. He motions over to me. Over to the car I went. Come on in. Sat down in the car. Where'd you get that hat? So I told him. He then asked me if I participated with the local faith communities in their getaways. Some people call them retreats. And I said, yeah, I do. And he said to me, what do you think about the ability to forgive and give forgiveness? If you think for a moment that on that August afternoon, I thought that was going to be a, a dialogue and a conversation that I was going to have, not in a million years. And we both shared with each other the importance of forgiving and the importance of forgiveness. And I will never forget that conversation because I believe it goes far beyond athletics and far beyond many other things in our world today. 
Dick was about goodness. Goodness. Maybe some would say greatness. But I'll take them for goodness. Because goodness will get you a long way in this world. And aligning yourselves with good people is critical. And it will be all about the people you meet along the way. Trust me. Trust me on that. I've met people all over the world on airplanes and had conversation with them. And I'm going to leave you with one tip. Maybe two. You want to get someone talking? Just ask them one question. Where's home? And if you ask people where's home, they're going to tell you. And then from there, you will, not, you will be amazed at the conversation you'll be able to have. You'll meet new people. You'll have new experiences. So I'm very grateful, Ruth Ann, to be here on a very different level. And to all of the student athletes, I wish you the very best. You know what you're going to do moving forward. Success and Godspeed. Have a good night. At this time, I'd like to ask Principal Banach to come up and recognize our National Honor Society athletes. Good evening, everyone. Before I recognize the students in our honor societies, I want to thank our student athletes who came to school today and were part of the campus beautification and picking up around our campus in preparation for graduation. I thank you for that. I understand that there are some other projects underway and I'm looking forward to seeing you all united in your efforts to come together and to help prepare for all the events that we have coming up over the next couple of weeks. So again, I thank you. I'm going to recognize all our student athletes who are part of the four honor societies that we have at Milford High School. I'm going to begin with the National Art Honor Society. When you hear your name, please stand. Andrew Salazar. <laughs> Julia Tempesta. <laughs> In our Tri-M Music Honor Society, Kimberly Hayes. <laughs> Nolan Hobart. Serena Isaac and Nick Monica. And Megan Halpin, of course. In our National Spanish Honor Society, Lauren Asher. Mackenzie Bliss, Matthew Rose, Ashlyn Barney, Crystal Volpe, 
Kim Hayes. Jing Jing Chen. Rachel Nolan. Julia Tempesta. Brianna O'Shaughnessy. Haley Avila. Taylor Gilead. Carly Capaletti. Ryan Dahlgren. And Abigail Klein. And, and Megan Halpin. I'm sorry about that, Megan. <laughs> Forgive me. And in the National Honor Society, Lauren Asher, <laughs> Haley Avila, <laughs> Anna Bassett, <laughs> Eric Brajoli, <laughs> Mackenzie Cahill, <laughs> Victoria Shirelli, Samantha Cusquet, Ryan Dahlgren, Joseph Donato, Peter Ilya, Taylor Gilead, Kayla Graceffa, Kimberly Hayes, Nolan Hobart, Lisa Johnson, Matthew LeBlanc, Megan Halpin, Taylor LeBron, Griffin Lynch, Anthony Bazzini, Tyler Mikulski, Clarissa, Clarissa Miaris, Nicholas Monica, Rachel Nolan, Rachel, Rachel Nolan, Brianna O'Shaughnessy, Matthew Paleria, Alexander Piergustavo, Mitchell Procopus, David Quatrocchio, Bryce Ryan, Joshua Stiles, Jake Tamani, Julia Tempesta, Ashlyn Varney, and Crystal Volpe. Congratulations to all our student athletes on our honor societies. Thank you. Okay, next up we're gonna proceed with our present presentation of the senior gifts. Ushers, I'm going to bring everyone around this way. Guys, we're out back. And you'll exit the stage on this side, back to your seats. Thanks. Peter, you're up. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make a stab at announcing the names, so if I really butcher it, I apologize. 
David Abrejo. Adrian, Adrian Araujo. Katie Annis. Sean Arcoliano. <laughs> Gabriel Azam. Lauren Asher. <laughs> Haley Avila. <laughs> Anna Bassett. Earl Bassett. <laughs> Lucas Bentis. Jeffrey Bazazi. <laughs> Colin Bethel. Elizabeth Blackburn. <laughs> Mackenzie Bliss. Melissa Braza. <laughs> Eric Borgioli. Ryan Burley. <laughs> Sean Burns. Zachary Bucha. <laughs> Ray
River Cabral. Mackenzie Cahill. Nicholas Canning. Kali Capaletti. Kaylee Card. Danielle Carrier. Mikey Casey. Victoria Shirelli. Jonathan Situ. Taylor Cody. Samantha Cosquette. Evan Costello. Alexander Kuto. Carla Cubius. Benjamin Cuddy. Ryan Dahlgren. Danielle Denomini. Thomas DeWolf. <laughs> Molly Dillon. Joseph Donato. <laughs> Peter Elia.
Nylick Feaster. Joanne Fleury. Taylor Gilliatt. Kayla Graceffa. Megan Halpin. Kimberly Hayes. John Hearns. Nell mm, Hemingoffer. <laughs> Kayla Hippolito. <laughs> Nolan Hobart. Jared Hoover. <laughs> Serena Isaac. Lisa Johnson, William Johnson, Brittany Kelly, Brian Kibbe. Maurice Kimba, Abby Klein, Spencer Lawson. Dylan Lee. <laughs> Matthew Lobank. Taylor LeBron. <laughs> Devin Lamont. Seth Little.
Stephen Luna. Griffin Lynch. <laughs> Yesenia Manch. Philippe Mark, Julia Massionis, Anthony Mazzini. Missy Medeiros. Tyler Mikulski. Clarissa Maris. Nick Mobilia. <laughs> Nicholas Monica. Cole Morgan, Sebastian Maranta, Rachel Nolan. Quentin Orr, <laughs> Brianna O'Shaughnessy, <laughs> Olivia Overdahl. Matthew Polaria. <laughs> Alexandra Pergastavo. Diego Pinto, Kaylee Pratt, <laughs> and 
Mitchell Prokopis. David Quatracchio. Juan Quintero. Kevin Ribeiro. Brandon Rodriguez. Jonathan Rodriguez, Bryce Ryan. <laughs> Peter Shula. George Surreal. Christopher Spasara. Joshua Stiles. Jake Tamani. <laughs> Julia Tempesta. Anna Tarina. Adeline Tebow. Tommy Thomas. Jalen Tracy. George Tuttle. Joseph Valenzoda, Aslan Varney, Eric Vega. Crystal Volpe. Andrew Wild. And, and, hang on, I 
I got him. Last but not least, we had a little digital hiccup. Andre Luciano. Again, I apologize for any of the names I mispronounced. Next up, Peter Boucher, our athletic director, is going to present the Individual Athletic Achievement Awards. Guys, for this, we want you to come up the center stage and across this way. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So at this point, we're going to continue to move on. I'm going to ask Coach Chappie to come out and briefly recognize some of our senior class record breakers this year. This is a new addition to our agenda. Thank you, Peter. Um, in the age of standards and benchmarks, uh, often athletic teams are measured by wins and losses. But in some of the individual sports, uh, we have the luxury of records being our benchmarks. This year, we've seen four school benchmarks fall, and I'd like these student athletes to join me, join us on stage. Uh, in the 200-yard medley relay, Nick Monica, Nolan Hobart, and Josh Stiles for performance at the state championships. In the on the girls side, in the girls 100 yard, butterfly 100 yard, backstroke, Abigail Klein. At I'd like to add that she broke both those records on two successive weekends at the sectional and state championships. And in the boys long jump, Brian Kibbe. Individually, these are all great, great standards, and as I remind the boys, records are made to be broken, and they'll be back next year to root on their former teammates to do the same. Well done. So moving on, we have two MIAA major awards. We were very fortunate in Milford this year to be recognized statewide. The first one was a conglomerate of the MIAA, the Boston Bruins, and a statewide sportsmanship committee. This is a Massachusetts statewide award where each league votes one hockey player as their recipient or ambassador of their league who exemplifies these qualities, leadership, character, dedication, and above all, good sportsmanship. Our league head coaches unanimously, and if you know anything about head coaches at any of these end of the year meetings, unanimous just doesn't happen. Um, so the fact that the Hockamock League, all 12 coaches voted this one gentleman as the recipient, recipient. they chose Griffin Lynch to be the Hockamock League's <laughs> award recipient. Congrats to Griff. Griffin was actually invited to a Bruins game and got on the ice, so that was pretty spectacular that evening, to be honest with you. The next, the MIA has a recognition program where they, rep where they represent 10 females and 10 males, one each per school month throughout the year, who embody the characteristics of community service, dedicated athletics, and outstanding academics. This means that out of the 400,000 student athletes across Massachusetts, 20 of them are selected for this award. Pretty elite company. One of those student athletes is right here at Milford High School. He was nominated by his golf coach, Jason Potty, 
and endorsed by the Athletic and Academic Administration here at MHS. This year's November Student Athlete of the Month is Ryan Dahlgren. Come on up, Ryan. Okay, so moving on with the Dick Corbin Senior Night Athletic Awards. I will apologize ahead of time. I promise you I will do my absolute best with the names and pronunciation. The first is the Dr. John V. Gallagher Medal. It's awarded annually to the boy in the senior class who earns multiple varsity letters in multiple sports and has recognized scholastic achievement among those eligible. This year's recipient is Mr. Eric Rajoli. The John J. DeSalvia plaque is awarded annually to a female athlete in the senior class in recognition of her ability, sportsmanship, leadership, scholastic ability, and respect for authority. This year's recipient, Ms. Kim Hayes. Kim Miller Award is given to an outstanding boy in the senior class who possesses and has demonstrated qualities of leadership and responsibility through his participation in academic, moral, and social aspects at Milford High School in the community. This year's recipient, Mr. Anthony Mazzini. The Marilyn and John Moen Scholarship is awarded to a male and female member of the graduating class who are the top scholar athletes have earned a minimum of six varsity letters, will be continuing their education and have notable citizenship within the high school and community. There are actually four recipients this year. I'm gonna call all four up at the same time. Two female recipients, Julia Tempesta and Clarissa Miaras. Two male recipients, Anthony Mazzini and Nolan Holbart. John P. Calagione Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to someone who is led by example and has displayed compassion towards classmates and teammates, has made outstanding effort in the science classroom as well on the athletic field, has, letters, has lettered as a varsity athlete and will be pursuing a career in education or community service. And we weren't sure if there was a family member out there helping us present this award. Doesn't appear so, so we'll move forward. The recipient, In Jae Jung. <laughs> the annual Past Commanders Memorial Trophy of the Italian American War Veterans Post Number 40 is awarded to a member of the senior class in recognition of sportsmanship, citizenship, 
and football ability. It is presented in memory of departed comrades who made the supreme sacrifice. This year's recipient, Geo Tuttle. The Tony Longo Memorial Trophy is awarded to a senior boy who was a varsity football lineman. The recipient must have displayed a genuine desire and dedication toward playing football. He must also have displayed an unselfish attitude toward both his fellow teammates and coaches. This year's recipient, Mr. Sean Burns. The Milford High School Coaches Field Hockey Award. This scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the varsity field hockey team who demonstrates strong leadership, work ethic, and athletic ability. Throughout her four years, she must exemplify the meaning of teamwork, dedication, sound sportsmanship, and the love of the sport. Recipient, Ms. Clarissa Miaris. I'm going to ask Ms. Marin Dolan to come up, please. She's going to help give out the next two awards. This is for the Milford Youth Football Association and the Milford Youth Cheerleading Association. So for the Football Association, this scholarship is awarded to a senior who has participated in MYFA for at least two years. Recipient, Mr. Sean Burns. And the Milford Youth Cheerleading Association Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a senior who has participated in MYFA for at least two years also. Recipient, Ms. Victoria Shirelli. For the Tracy, Tracy L. Smith Varsity Cheerleading Scholarship, we're going to ask Kayla Smith, I believe her daughter is here this evening, can help us give out the award. This scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the Varsity Cheerleading Team based on overall sportsmanship, contribution to the team efforts, sound character, leadership, and good academic standing. The recipient should also possess the qualities that Tracy also known to her family, friends, and loved ones as Ash, lived her life by attitude, strength, and humor. This year's recipient, I should have asked her to stay up here, Victoria Shirelli.
The Milford Youth Hopedale Soccer Association Scholarships. These scholarships are awarded to those who have participated in MY, MHYSA for at least four seasons, have demonstrated good sportsmanship, and are respected by his or her peers. There are three recipients. I'm going to call all three up at the same time. Miss Megan Halpin, Miss Melissa Braza, and Mr. Josh Stiles. Congratulations. The Joseph Clifford Potty Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a player on the varsity golf team who has demonstrated the, qual demonstrated the qualities of leadership, strong character, sportsmanship, and has a true passion for the game of golf. This year's recipient, Mr. Joe Donato. Milford High School Basketball Coaches Award, these scholarships, or this scholarship, is awarded to a senior member of the boys' varsity basketball team. The award is based on overall performance, strong worth ethic, and a love for the game of basketball. This year's recipient, Mr. Brian Kibbe. The Matt O'Connor Unsung Hero Award. This scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the varsity basketball team whose contribu contributions are not always recognized. This year's recipient, Mr. Alex Croto. The John A. Tebow Memorial Scholarship. The scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the varsity wrestling team based on overall performance, sportsmanship, total contribution to the team's efforts, sound character, leadership, and good academic standing. This year's recipient, Mr. Eric Brajoli. The Milford Ice Hockey Scholarship Award, there are two of these. This scholarship is awarded to graduating seniors who have displayed desire, dedication, and discipline on and off the ice throughout their four years. They've also demonstrated good sportsmanship and are respected by their teammates. The two recipients are Mr. Nick Mobilia and Mr. Sean Burns. Milford High School Swimming Coaches Award. This scholarship is awarded annually to a senior boy or girl who demonstrate a high level of success based on overall performances at both dual and championship competition. Beyond performance, the recipient shall demonstrate leadership, sportsmanship, character, work ethic, and high academic standing. This year's recipient, Mr. Josh Stiles.
Milford Baseball Incorporated Umpires Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a senior who has a junior who was a junior league umpire. The recipient, Mr. Bryce Ryan. The Albert J. Inglesi Memorial Baseball Scholarship, the recipient of this scholarship must have been a participant in MYB for three years, been a member of the varsity baseball team, and be academically successful by maintaining a B average during high school. This year's recipient, Mr. Griffin Lynch. The Jeffrey Hemenhofer Milford High School Baseball Coaches Award. These scholarships are awarded to the senior players of the varsity baseball team who demonstrate strong worth ethic, qualities of leadership and sportsmanship. There are three names. I would ask you to hold your applause till the third name. Mr. Peter Schuler, Mr. Tommy Thomas, and Mr. Alex Crowdo. Congratulations. Charlie Stan Unsung Hero Award. This scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the varsity baseball team whose contributions are not always recognized. This year's recipient, Mr. Jeff Bazazi. Milford Girls Fast Pitch Softball League Scholarship. These two scholarships are awarded to members of the varsity softball team who have participated in at least four years of the Milford Girls Softball League. Same situation, two names, please hold your applause. The recipients are Miss Taylor Lebrun and Miss Ali Pierre Gustavo. Milford High School Boys Volleyball Coaches Award. This scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the boys volleyball team who has at least two years varsity experience. The recipient must demonstrate a strong worth ethic and love for the game. It's based on athletic ability, leadership, sportsmanship, coachability, dedication, and commitment. This year's recipient, Mr. Eric Vega. Milford High School Girls Volleyball Coaches Award. This scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the girls volleyball team who has at least two years of varsity experience. The recipient must demonstrate a strong worth ethic and love for the game. It's based on athletic ability, leadership, sportsmanship, coachability, dedication, and commitment. This year's recipient, Ms. Carly Capaletti.
I saw you. Milford High School Lacrosse's Coaches Awards, there's a male and female recipient. These scholarships are awarded to senior members of the boys and girls varsity lacrosse team. Again, two recipients will hold our applause. Female recipient, Miss Molly Dillon. Male recipient, Mr. Nolan Hobart. Scarlet Hawk Award, this, the recipient of this award is dedicated to the success of all Milford High School programs through his or her enthusiasm, character, and school spirit. This year's recipient, Mr. David Cotrocchio. Maureen O'Brien Cullen Unsung Hero Heroin Award. This scholarship is awarded to someone who has made a contribution to an athletic or other school activity, to a community activity, or to a family activity, and has demonstrated character and, and integrity through their unselfish and often unrecognized contributions. This year's recipient, Mr. Josh Stiles. The Robert P. Bartolotto Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a versatile, all-around athlete who demonstrates qualities of citizenship, character, and sportsmanship, and is accepted to a school of higher learning. This year's recipient, Mr. Sean Acalano. John J. Lowney Memorial Scholarship. The recipient of this scholarship is given to a senior student who best demonstrates unwavering dedication to the support of MHS basketball. The student should be of exemplary character, demonstrate his or her appreciation of the team concept, and in the words of Mr. Lowney's historical idol, Winston Churchill, never give in in nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in, give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. I'm not sure she's here this evening, but the recipient is Miss Joanne Flory. <laughs> Scarlet Hawk Achievement Award. The award is given to a senior athlete who truly exemplifies what it means to be a Scarlet Hawk. This year's recipient, Mr. Stephen Luna. Milford High School Girls Basketball Coaches Award. This scholarship is awarded to a senior member of the girls basketball team who is committed to playing at the collegiate level. The recipient, Ms. Clarissa Miares. Milford High School Booster Club Athletic Scholarships. The recipients of this scholarship must contribute to athletics within Milford High School by demonstrating leadership, sportsmanship, character, team spirit, personal achievement, versatility, and sacrifice. 
We already have our booster executives up here to present the awards. We have six names. And again, if you could hold the, the applause until afterwards, that would be great. Ms. Melissa Braza, Mr. Griffin Lynch, Mr. Peter Schuler, Mr. John Hearns, Ms. Molly Dillon, and Mr. Gio Tuttle. This is a new award. I don't believe this gentleman is here, but I do want to mention that the Unified Athletics Volunteer of the Year Award, this recipient must be committed to Scarlet Hawk Unified Athletics and demonstrate the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication. This year's first award winner, Nalik Feaster. Hockamock League Scholar Athlete of the Year. This is a Hockamock League Award. The recipients must be in the top 15% of their class and also must be award-winning athletes. Preference is given to three sport athletes and the recipients must, must be two sport athletes. Two, again, two recipients. The male recipient, Mr. Nolan Hobart. The female recipient, Ms. Clarissa Miaris. The District C Athletic Director's Award. The recipients must be in good academic standing and display sound character and judgment. They must also display the following traits and qualities of the athletic fields, on the athletic fields, in the classroom, and in the community. Responsible citizenship, leadership, scholastic achievement, and must have contributed services to the school and community. There are four recipients. Please hold your applause. Ms. Clarissa Miarez. Mr. Eric Rajoli, Mr. Stephen Luna, Mr. Matthew LeBlanc. Richard C. Corbin Memorial Athletic Scholarship. We're going to ask Ruth Ann to come on up and help us with this. The scholarship is awarded to a senior athlete possessing the qualities of integrity, perseverance, dedication, exemplary work ethic, and a true passion for athletic participation. These attributes were promoted and admired by Coach Corbin. This year's recipient, Mr. Gio Tuttle. And now for the Tony Correa Memorial Coaches Award. I'll talk a little bit about the award, then I will ask one of our head coaches to present each of the female and male <coughs> recipient awards. The recipients of this award must be a two or three sport varsity letter winner during their senior year in good academic standing and displaying the qualities of sound character and citizenship. These student athletes must display the traits and qualities upon which the award is based in the athletic arena, in the classroom, and within the community. To present the female award, our head softball coach, Mr. Steven DeVito.
Thank you, Mr. Boucher. Just want to congratulate everyone, student athletes again tonight. This is your night. Congratulations to you guys for all of your accomplishments of the class of 2015. I have the distinct honor tonight to present the female recipient for the Tony Correa Award. Over the past four years, I have seen this young woman grow into an extraordinary leader academically and athletically during her time at Milford High School. She is one of the select student athletes I have met who is well respected by teachers, coaches, parents, and students alike. She has been involved in several programs and performed countless hours of community service over the last four years, during which time I have witnessed her remarkable growth and progression as a young woman. She cares for her teammates and those around her, and it shows through her personality and her dedication. She understands the value of goal setting for her academic and athletic achievements, the importance of being a team leader, improving overall team morale, and keeping the focus on teamwork. She has been able to show the ability to bounce back from adversity and has been willing to put in the extra time that is necessary to become a better student athlete. She understands that her continued hard work and dedication will allow her to obtain the ultimate success in the classroom and in athletics. According to her swim coaches, Coach Janosko and Coach Chaplin, She's a standout swimmer, according to Coach Janosko, who is one of the only non-club swimmers at the sectional and state meets year in and year out. She has set personal records every year she has been on the team, constantly working hard to improve. Coach Chaplin says that her leadership qualities make her an extension of the coaching staff and an extension of the program. Being voted as a co-captain of the varsity softball team this season was an honor for her. She has taken on that responsibility with pride. She understands that sometimes it takes more than hitting, pitching, and defense to win games. It takes the work before and after games, the constant work ethic that every coach wants to see in all of their players. It takes team chemistry and leaders that are willing to sacrifice themselves for the better of the team. We constantly, as a coaching staff, hear her voice communicating with her teammates at practice, making sure that our energy and our effort is where it needs to be at every practice and every game. What makes a great leader? Well, in my opinion, one who has more concern for their team than they do for their own individual accomplishments. With that being said, I think it's time, right now, for me to share some of those individual accomplishments both in the pool and on the softball field. And bear with me, they're a little lengthy. According to Coach Chaplin, which gave me his, his notes for tonight, I appreciate that, Coach, thank you. She's a four-year fixture in the sprint freestyle events, sectional and state qualifier, four years running in the 50 freestyle, a league all-star in both the Southern Conference and the Hockamock League. She was a 2012 medalist in the fall sectional 200 medley and 200 freestyle relays. 2012 division two fall states medley and 200 free relays. A Hockamock finalist in 50 free and relay events. She was the winner of the team award for most dedicated as a junior and senior for MVP. On the softball diamond, a career 392 hitter currently hitting 542 this year. It's okay. 82 career hits, 32 which have been this year. 21 career doubles, 11 home runs, 65 RBIs. Her junior year, a unanimous Hockamock League All-Star selection and also gathered consideration as league MVP as a junior. She was voted the team MVP as a junior. I can go on and on and on, but you get the point. Her attitude and dedication, sacrifices, have carried her and molded her into the young woman she is today, and that is a direct reflection of her upbringing. The Korea Award is presented to the individual who exhibits dedication and commitment to Milford Athletics and to Milford High School. This award is presented to the type of individual who is a pleasure to coach and the type of student athlete all coaches dream of having in their program. 
This girl has done more than her part over the last four years to earn this distinct honor and to be the recipient of this award. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the recipient, the female recipient of the 2015 Tony Correa Memorial Coaches Award, Ali Pierre Gustavo. Thank you, Coach DeVito. And now for the boys' presentation, I'm going to ask head baseball coach Paul Pellegrini to step up to the microphone. Can't leave me alone for one night, guys. It's my honor to present uh, tonight's meal recipient of the Tony Correa Memorial Coaches Award. This recipient of the award is voted on by the head coaches in, in our sports system and exemplifies the highest standard of athleticism coupled with the likability of a coach's player. Some of the attributes taken into consideration include, but are not limited to, dedication, sacrifice, enthusiasm, hustle, heart, coachability, and most of all, a true leader. This student athlete was a three-year starter on two varsity sports teams, hockey and baseball. According to his hockey coach, Mike Balzarini, this player, led by example, was dependent upon each and every game throughout his three-year career on the ice. This past year, he finished fourth in the Hockamock League in scoring with 34 points. He was selected to 2014-2015 Hockamock League All-Star. He made great contributions on special teams and, and went above and beyond when called upon by his coaches and teammates. As team captain, he was instrumental in developing the productivity of his younger players. During the last three years, I've had the distinct pleasure to coach this year's recipient on the baseball field. Over this time frame, I have watched this individual grow as a person and student athlete, and knew from his sophomore year on that he was a unique and special individual. This player immediately stepped into a starter's role with a team of eight, starting, eight other senior starters, and embraced his role with confidence and without trepidation. He continued his dedication to the sport and carried his team over to his junior year where he catapulted our team into the playoffs for the 37th consecutive season by batting over 500 uh, in our last eight games with a team leading batting average of 400 for the season. He was also named a league all-star in, in baseball in the Hockamock League. It's kind of one of the toughest things to do. There's only 12 all-stars on 12 teams. So uh, quite an accomplishment. Uh, he was also named our team's MVP last year. This year has proven no different. As team captain, this recipient has continued his successful commitment to the sport by batting 435 and is on his way to another All-Star and MVP season. In conclusion, I can honestly say in my 15 years of coaching at Milford High, this recipient has been one of my favorite student athletes to coach. He is, a type, he is a type of kid every coach wants on their team. His dedication and representation to our school makes him the ideal candidate for the Tony Career Award. This year's male recipient of the award, Drew Wild. Thank you, Coach Pellegrini. Before I turn it over to our booster president, I want to thank our student athletes one last time. I will tell you that in 25 years, I have worked at two other high schools in the Hockamock League, and I have worked at one small Division III college as the athletic director. And I can honestly tell you, from start to finish, this is by far the best and, and best and most well planned and, and there was so much energy put into this evening. This is the best award ceremony I've ever seen. 25 years and add four years as a high school athlete, maybe four years more as a college athlete. So how about a round of applause for our student athletes? <laughs> Certainly congratulating our student athletes. How about a quick round of applause for their support network, their teachers, their parents, their families, and our boosters. Very, very impressive. I will turn it over 
to Tom to close out the evening. Thank you very much. All right, we did our best to try and keep it around two hours. We've got two more minutes. I really appreciate everyone coming out. In closing, I need to take a few moments to thank a lot of people who have made this evening and have been very supportive to the Boosters Club and me personally, as my term as Boosters President comes to an end on July 1st. First, I want to thank the Milford High School Class of 2015 for all your efforts and hard work in representing our community and Milford High School. We're all proud of your achievements in the field and courts of play, but we're most proud of your ability to remain focused and diligent with your studies and become graduates soon of Milford High School. I need to thank my Boosters Club family, our Vice President, Chris Lynch, our Treasurer, Joe Arcudi, and our Secretary, Colleen Ferreira, as well as that core group of parents that were always there to pitch in and help. These people have put in a tremendous amount of time and energy, and I can't thank them enough for their con contributions and support. I have a special thanks tonight to our tri, our tri chairman for tonight's event, and I'd like uh, them to stand up and be recognized. Joanne Dillon, Nicole Shula, and Carla Tuttle. Where's Carla? Way up the back. Now, they also had a lot of help, so if everyone could turn into the back inside cover, there's a whole lot of people that went into helping tonight. And there's probably a whole lot of people that aren't listed or I'm going to forget. So I'm not even going to try and list. I want to thank everybody for their help and their participation in tonight. <clears throat> I want to thank Superintendent Tremblay and his administration, Principal Banach, and her staff, two athletic directors, Rich Pergastavo and Peter Boucher. Peter, yeah, Peter Boucher and all their coaches for welcoming the efforts of the Boosters Club. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work with all of you. This night could not be possible without the support and generosity of the scholarship and award sponsors. Thank you for your continued support of our student athletes. Thank you to the Corbin family for your continued support and for sharing Coach Corbin with us and allowing us to honor him in this way. And finally, I have to thank my own family, my wife, Kathy, my kids, Tom, Kayla, and Alyssa, who have put up with me. Yeah. Thank you. They've put up with me for the past two years as I devoted a lot of time and energy to the boosters' causes. I could not have done it without their support. I wish the recently newly, uh, the newly elected boosters' executive board some of them, you've heard the names before, they're moving into new positions, but Joe Arcudi will be our next president. Chris Lynch is going to remain on as vice president. Joanne Dillon will move into our treasurer position. And Gina Tommaso will move into our secretary uh, position. I wish, them, I wish them much success in their future endeavors. And I'd ask any of you that would like to get involved in the many booster events like this evening, to reach out to the new officers. Okay, finally, athletes, it's your turn. It's been all about you tonight. So would you please stand up? Turn around and face the audience, please. So, all right, now I'm going to give you a chance in a second to really get loud. <clears throat> so seated before you are your parents and families, your coaches, your teachers, and your friends. These people have been your biggest supporters, at, ta at times maybe even your, your worst critics, but always your greatest fans. Please throw, show them how much their love and support has meant to you over the years with a loud applause. Oh. I think you can do louder than that. Come on. I uh, invite everyone. Go ahead, guys. You can have a seat.
There are snacks and refreshments in the cafeteria across the way. We ask everyone to remain seated until our senior athletes have processed out of the auditorium. To the class of 2015, congratulations on your achievements and enjoy the rest of your senior activities. Thank you all for attending and good night. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life.